Good afternoon folks, you're watching The Hungry Hand Gunner, and today we're going to go over why it may not be a bad idea, especially in light of some of the stuff from the Rittenhouse trial, to have extra tools in your toolbox when it comes to self-defense. Fortunately, it didn't really make a difference in the verdict uh, for Kyle Rittenhouse that he only had the AR-15. But I think it's prudent uh, to maybe pay attention to the fact that the prosecutor did bring up that that was all he had was deadly force. Uh, he had no less lethal. He had no OC spray or anything like that. Um, and again, I know somebody's going to say, well, it didn't make a difference. Well, fortunately, it didn't, but it might have. Who knows what could have happened with a different jury or things like that. So I think it's prudent for us to always be thinking um, along the lines of having multiple tools for different tasks. Not every self-defense situation is going to be a gun situation. Um, just like if you have a toolbox around your house, you don't just want to have a screwdriver or just have a hammer. You want to have a variety of tools so that whatever you're doing, you have what you need for that job. I think that's kind of an important takeaway from this. There's a variety of products and options and training and opinions on the matter, so I don't claim to be the be-all, end-all authority on this. These are just my thoughts. Um, some sort of empty-handed martial arts skill could be useful, whether that's jiu-jitsu, krav maga, taekwondo, any of the above. Um, I will say it's my opinion that taekwondo is largely a show martial art, and that's just my opinion after doing that for about eight years. Um, there are more effective martial arts in terms of self-defense out there, but any of the above uh, would be better than having no skills with your hands at all, even boxing. Good workout, uh, good skill to have, and I think that that's kind of underrated because there could be situations that, well, the gun isn't necessarily warranted, but you still need to defend yourself or get away from somebody, and again, it's a good workout. Uh, being in good physical shape is important. So, yeah, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not the best poster child for that, but it is important, and I can recognize my own shortfallings there. OC spray is a great one. Uh, it's convenient to carry. It's not all that expensive, and if you've ever been exposed to it, which I had the misfortune of doing a couple times, it's very potent stuff. Now, there is a certain percentage of the population that is immune to it, um, and those folks are very lucky. For the rest of us, though, that is a very debilitating thing to get hit with, especially directly. It's no fun. Uh, you guys may have seen the video of me getting tased. I would rather do that again than get OC sprayed. So, there is that. Knives or blunt impact weapons and things like that, or uh, they have their place. You guys know I'm a big fan of the ShivWorks push dagger. I think that is a, a fantastic self-defense tool. Um, there are other things out there that, that may work. Check the legality of where you're at in terms of carrying and potentially using those items. But for the most part, with what I've been able to find, if you use a knife or a blunt instrument, um, but we'll go with the knife right now. Nine times out of ten, using that knife is going to be looked at the same way as using a gun. It is deadly force. That's not to say that there's no place for it. Um, you guys can see on the push dagger video that will be floating around up there and down in the description. Um, that can be used to make space to get to a firearm if the situation warrants deadly force. So again, all this kind of goes into knowing the laws for where you live and knowing the ethics thereof. Uh, the more options you have, the better. Now you can certainly go overboard though and carry too much, you know, 19 spare mags, this, that, and the other. So somewhere along the line, I think prudence and just reality needs to take over and everybody's situation is different depending on what you do and the environments you're in um, that you don't have control over and then the environments that you do have control over. Making good decisions in terms of what you may encounter I think is also equally important. You win every fight you don't get in. And I bet if we ask Kyle Rittenhouse now, uh, I'm sure he would likely say that hindsight being 2020, maybe he wouldn't have been there that night. I don't know. So 
there is that. Guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up the topic for me. I wanted to take this moment and say thank you to my patron supporters and my channel members. You guys rock. Uh, Patreons get patron-only content. Channel members get early access to the videos you see here. So I appreciate everything you guys do. Um, you're under no obligation to do it, and yet you continue to do it, and it means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Guys, stay safe, stay smart, keep shooting and training, and I'll see you next time.